Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Linda. Here on this channel, I share videos about sewing, pattern drafting, and everything fashion. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you guys how to draft and sew this beautiful gown with bell sleeves, which has been trending lately. And also, this gown has a v-neckline. If this seems like what you're interested in, you might want to take a pause and subscribe so we can start. So guys, here on my work table, the first thing I did was to fold my fabric into two on the wrong side and then I went ahead to draw a straight line as a starting line. So from the starting line, I measured my half of my shoulder measurement, which is 7.5 and then I went downwards by one inch and marked the line. And also I went inwards around this part of the neckline by 4 inches. So after that, the next thing I did was to connect a shoulder slope from that neckline. So I just drew a line like this and I drew another line on top for the shoulder joining. So from there I'm going to be measuring my armhole depth. Half of my armhole measurement is 8 inches which I just marked and I'm just going to extend the line outwards like this and then connect the line upwards to get the armhole curve. So the next thing I'll be doing right now is to place my tape rule from the tip of the neckline. I'm going to be taking my bust point measurement and then I'll be taking my under bust as well, then my waistline measurement. I also added half of an inch at the waistline as you can see, then I went ahead to connect the lines with my ruler. So guys, while I was drawing the lines, I frantically skipped my under bust measurement. So I'm just going to include that and then I'm going to also connect it with my ruler just like I connected the others and from there I've been taking my nipple to nipple measurement half of my nipple to nipple measurement is 3.5 but I'm just marking 4 inches because I'm drafting directly on the fabric so I'll just go ahead and connect the line straight down to the waistline and after that the next thing I did was to come in with at the under bust line by half of an inch and then I'll be doing the same thing at the waistline as well at the other part, which is the side front part, I went ahead to place my tape roll and I marked 2 inches at the outer part just like this and also I duplicated the same thing around the waistline. Next thing I did was to connect the lines with my ruler. So guys, after I was done connecting the lines, I went ahead to place my tape rule like this. I went down from the bust point by 1.25 inch and then I'm just going to connect the line with my curve ruler in a slanted manner. I'll also do the same thing at the opposite side. Also ensure that you're not making this line too curvy to avoid mistakes. The next thing I did was to come back at the armhole and divided the armhole into two and then I marked one inch in between for the dart intake. And from there, I'm going to be connecting the bust chair to the armhole. This is going to serve as my princess bust chair. So just go ahead and connect it with your curved ruler, or better still, you can make use of your free hand. Whichever one is easier for you, you are going to achieve the same look. So guys, what I'm basically doing is making sure that my bust chair is well shaped and curved so that it will look nice even after stitching it. Alright, so I'll just go ahead and connect the second part of the line like you see me doing. I also added one inch around that princess armhole dart to make up for the dart which I took out. So I'm just going to connect the lines with my curve ruler towards the armhole and then that is going to serve as our new armhole. So the next step to take is to mark the body measurement. So I'll be marking quarter of my bust circumference which is 9.5 and, and then I'm just going to add like 2.5 inch for the st stitching allowance and then around the um, bust point I'll be repeating the same thing I have at the chest line. Moving on to the under bust, I will add quarter of the under bust measurement plus the dart which I'm taking out, I will be adding it back to avoid shortage of fabric and then I'll be adding 2 inches stitching allowance and heading to the waistline, I'll be repeating the same thing. Quarter of my waistline measurement plus that intake which I took, I took out and then the extra 2 inches stitching allowance. So guys, after I was done marking the chalk line, I went ahead to connect the line like you see me doing and then I went back to the neckline. So for the neckline, I measured 8 inches downwards from the neckline and then I marked it this way and also I connected it to this part where I marked initially. I'm just going to use my ruler to draw a triangle and then that is it for the neckline. Then I'll just proceed to cut it up. This is how it looks like after I was done cutting it out and then next thing I'll do is to proceed 
to drafting the back piece. I went ahead to fold my fabric once more for the back piece and I also gave 2 inches zipper allowance, connected the lines and then used my ruler to trace out the line. So now starting from this zipper allowance line, I'm placing my tape row. Then I marked half of my shoulder measurement, which is 7.5, and then I drew a line from there. Afterwards, I went ahead to mark the neckline, starting from that same zipper allowance, and then I also marked the shoulder slope. From there, I went down by one inch to connect the line. So afterwards, I placed my tape row around this part of the shoulder to measure out my armhole depth, just like I did for the front. And then I went back to this part of the neckline. I marked my bust point, my under bust, which I really don't need, and then my waistline. So I connected the lines one after the other respectively. So guys, instead of measuring out the nipple to nipple measurement, I used my front piece to just assume that I am marking that. And also I just marked um, the second part of the back piece like this. Remember that I'm just giving a little space to make about one inch, half an inch on both sides, okay? That's going to form the joining allowance. So I went ahead to connect the armhole measurement. I also gave one inch allowance at this part of the armhole so that I'll be able to stitch it together. Then I went ahead to mark the body measurement. Just go ahead and mark quarter of your bust circumference and then add necessary allowances. Your one inch that allowance plus your stitching allowance, making three inches like I just added. And then I also marked the one for the waistline and connected the lines. Next thing to do right now is to cut it out. Also go ahead and measure the depth of your back neckline. Whichever shape you want it to take, just measure it right there. So I placed my tape rule to mark uh, the neckline I desired for this particular back piece. And then I connected it with my curve ruler and also cut it out. I also didn't forget to deduct half of an inch around the lower part of the zipper area just to eliminate my zipper bulge, drew the lines and trimmed it away. I also notched the lower part and the upper part of the zipper allowance so I wouldn't forget when it's time to stitch them together. So this is what I have after I was done with the front and the back piece of the dress. So the next thing is to cut out the lower part which is the skirt pattern. So I went ahead to mark a line like this as you see me doing. This is going to be my starting line. So from that starting line I'll be placing my tape row excluding my half length so i'll be placing from my half length downwards to mark my hip measurements and then be marking my knee line measurement okay after marking my hip measurement i placed my tape from that part divided what i have left for the lower part and got the midpoint which is going to form my knee line so from there i will just go ahead and draw out the lines So I'm going to explain once more. I went ahead to divide the distance from my hip line to the length of my skirt pattern and then I got the midpoint which we serve as the knee line. And this is the knee line I drew. I'll just go upwards by extra 2 inches like this for my new knee line and then I'll connect it with my ruler. So here we have it, our measurements are coming together. Heading back to the waistline, I went ahead to mark quarter of my waist circumference plus one inch for the dart intake and then two inches for the stitching allowance and then coming downwards to the hip line i marked quarter of my hip circumference plus two inches general stitching allowance you can make use of 1.5 inches if you don't want too much of fabric and then heading to the knee line i'll be deducting one and a half inch from my hip line and then i'll be marking that just like you see me doing plus the extra two inches stitching allowance then i'll take my hand straight down from here to the length so i'll just go ahead and connect with my curve ruler and then rotate it the other way around to, to draw out the shape of my skirt And afterwards, I went ahead to cut out the skirt. I also used the front pattern of the skirt pattern as a template to cut out the back. 
So the only difference is just that the back has a zipper allowance. So I'm just going to measure out what I have here as two inches for the zipper and then I'll be marking that. I'll just go ahead and reduce this part by half of an inch and then I'll connect it into the hip line just like you see me doing and from there I'll be going downwards by five inches you can mark six inches if you wish and then after marking that I'll be taking one inch inwards from here that's going to create a curve for the butt After I am done connecting the curve like you see me doing, I went ahead to draw a straight line from that one inch mark I gave all the way down to the length of the skirt. And next I went ahead to cut it out. So guys, after I was done cutting the back piece of the skirt, I went ahead to notch out this part of the hip line. This is because I don't want to get confused as to where the side seam belongs to. So I'll just go ahead and trim out this excess part at the lower part. But then I remember that I need hemming allowance. So I'll be including that with my learning later on. So guys, after I was done cutting out the pieces, I just went ahead to arrange them on the table like you see me doing. The next thing to do is to cut out the lining piece for each of them. This is how it looks like after I was done. I added SA and then interfacing as well. I already went ahead to stitch the lining to the skirt piece. And then coming back to this part, you see that I added my warden. I used my SA as my warden instead. And then I did the same thing for all other pieces for the front piece, including the lining parts as well. So the first thing to do is to stitch the front piece. I'll go ahead and stitch them like this together with this center piece. Just by placing them right side to right side facing each other, I'll just go ahead and make a stitch upwards by half of an inch and then I'll be doing the same thing for the other side as well. I'll also go ahead and do the same thing for my lining piece. So this is how it looks like after I was done stitching the front piece and as you can see I went ahead to create a notch here to give it more flexibility and I did the same thing for my lining piece as well. So now I'll just go ahead and press this with my telos ham just to open up the seams this way. I'll be using my hot steam press iron to open it up and make it flat. And I'll be doing the same thing for the lining piece as well. After I was done ironing, I went ahead to place my lining piece like this, right side to right side with the main fabric. And then I'll go ahead and stitch the neckline in a V shape just like you see me pointing. And I'll also stitch the sides together. This is how it looks like after I was done stitching the sides and the neckline. The next thing I will be doing right now is to work on the back piece. So I'll head over to the machine and then stitch these two sides together by placing them right side to right side facing each other. I'll just go ahead and make sure that I'm stitching them at 0.5 inches all the way to the top like this. And then I'll do the same thing for the lining piece as well and get back to you. So guys, as you can see on the back piece pattern, I already went ahead to close the sides and then I closed the neckline and ironed the zipper allowance. Next, I brought my front piece and the lower pattern, which is a skirt pattern. Then I placed them on the table like this with the right side facing up. This is because I want to create the dart. So I'm just matching them up to align with the midpoint in the center like this. Then I'll arrange the skirt to match with the dart of the upper pattern. So I'll just go ahead and fold it like this by half of an inch. And then I'll be securing it with my pins to keep them in place. This is how it's going to look like when I'm actually done stitching. So I'll head over to the machine and do that then get back to you. And by the time I am done with that, I'll be joining these two parts together at the waistline. So guys, as you can see on my work table, I've already gone ahead to stitch the darts and then the upper part and lower part of the back piece. And this is the front piece after I was done stitching it on the machine. So the next thing to do right now is just to place them like this. I'll just go ahead and stitch the shoulders. I'll be joining the shoulder part by half of an inch on the machine on both sides. Heading back to the back piece, I went ahead to measure the length of the zipper which I am fixing. I'm just going to make sure it's up to 24 inches and then I'll be going upwards by one and a half inches for my zipper length. And then the rest of what I have there is going to be stitched as my slits. So I'll just go ahead and fix my zipper and then iron out my slits just like you see me pointing. 
so i'll be measuring from this part to check the length of what i want to stitch i'll just stitch something like this from this part down to this part it's not up to 10 inches so i'll just stitch and stop at this point the rest is going to become my slit so i'll just go ahead and fold this part then press it flat with my iron while i am inserting my hemming gum just to secure it in place I'll be doing that off camera and then I'll be cutting out the sleeves. For the sleeves, I drafted that a bell sleeve, which is also a basic sleeve with an inverted triangle in the middle. The upper part is just a basic sleeve, while the lower part is just flared like this outwards. Then I curved it like this from the inside. So if you want to do that, just go ahead and raise your hand by 2 inches from this part of the sleeve to trim out a little portion of it to form an inverted triangle. And then you're just going to stitch it. I went ahead to stitch it on the machine at the armhole. And then I also closed the sides like you see me pointing. And then I double folded the hem of the sleeve and stitched it. I also went ahead to do the same thing for the other part of the sleeve. And then the next thing I'll be doing right now, just to close the sides for my dress. So as you can see, I went ahead to mark a chalk line for where I want to stop with my stitches. So I'll just stitch this part and then also make sure that I stitch the other part as well. So after closing the sides, I'll go ahead and work on the lower part. So guys, this is how it looks like after I was done stitching. The next thing I want to do is to check the area where I'm going to be inserting my side fabric, which is going to be draping on one side of the body. I also went ahead to cut out the size of the fabric I want to be inserting as my draped fabric. I had 46 inches in length and then for the width I have about 25 inches. So I have in total of 25 inches in width and 46 inches in length. So I went ahead to hem it. It's all around the four corners, just like you see me pointing. So the next thing I did was to get my fabric, which is going to be draped and then arrange it on one side of the body around the side seam. I'm just going to make pleats like you see me pointing and then use my pins to secure it in place one after the other. This is what it looks like after I was done. I went ahead to press it with my pressing iron to define the pleats. And after that, the next thing I did was to fold this part inwards, I'm just going to keep it in between in the middle, then close the back piece right side to right side with the front piece. I'll just head over to the machine right now and then stitch the sides like this by 2 inches stitching allowance I gave initially. You can go ahead and stitch them one after the other or better still stitch them together. And you also need to stitch the second part halfway and stop just at the hip line. This is how it looks like after I was done stitching my pleats into the side seam. Then the next thing to do is just to go ahead and make another pleat on the other part. Just arrange it in such a way that it's not too tight and then it's not too loose at the same time. You are going to be opening this part on the machine and then place the remaining fabric on the seam line you stitch it in the middle following the stitch line from the outer part okay just stitch it from the outer part and not from the inside that is going to form your draped fabric so i'll just quickly do that pin them together and get back to you To do this in a much easier way, just go ahead and open up your zipper, insert one of your hands from inside the back piece, open up the seams at the side, and then you're just going to align these parts together, secure them with your pins in place. So guys, finally, this is how it looks like after I was done. I'll head over to the machine and stitch them in place, then complete the remaining stitches, and this is the outcome. Thank you guys for sticking with me to the end of this video. If you haven't subscribed, kindly do so now. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!